Now for our muscle to muscle constraints. As I mentioned in the earlier video, the muscle to muscle constraints are going to help keep the muscles um, connected together to stop them from gaping or moving away from one another. So when you toggle on the visualize for muscle to muscle, it will show the a preview of the constraints in green. I just want to actually take this moment to clarify something. The constraint properties node does not create the constraints yet. The constraints we see here are only previews of them and they don't get passed along. So the constraints themselves do not exist at this point afterwards. It's only created a bunch of attributes that will control how the constraints are then created in the muscle solver. So don't take um, these as being um, the final say necessarily. Um, one of the things that you can do, for instance, is paint some of these masks that control various ways in which the constraints will be created, which is why you can still edit it after this. Yeah, you can create the attributes after your constraint properties node, and because the constraints don't exist yet, that you're free to do that. And then only in the solver will it be properly created. Uh, in any case, uh, in this video, I might talk as if these constraints are actually really being created now, just because it's um, it's an easier shorthand, but um, it is actually, these are only temporary previews. Okay. So again, like the muscle ends, these first few properties or parameters, they have a very similar function um, as in the muscle ends, uh, except of course that in this case, the stiffness is not multiplied by a million under the hood. So this is a relatively lower stiffness value than this one, even though they both say 10. Um, and this also is not initialized to 10 if you don't toggle this on. So I again suggest toggling all of these on for your first tab, except, and this is where exceptions to the rule pop in, except for these bottom two. So you can toggle the others on, but do not toggle these ones on for your general settings. I will explain why later. So these have the same type of behavior as the muscle ends, um, except of course the compression stiffness. If you set it below one, it will allow the muscles to compress closer together if there's a gap between them and the rest length scale will pull the muscles closer together if the rest length scale is less than one and it will allow the muscles to move apart a little bit if the rest length scale is greater than one. And now for the remaining parameters, um, let me actually change my, my viewport a little bit. I'm going to change it to wireframe and it's uh, a little bit hard to see with this light background. So I'm going to press D to bring up the display options and in the background tab, I'm going to choose dark gray. Okay. That is much better. Okay. Another thing I'm going to do just to simplify what we're seeing is I'm going to blast away most of my muscles and only keep three. So here I want these three. Now this is um, maybe a handy little moment to show how the group selector uh, doesn't know to use the muscle IDs by default if you're not in an official muscle node because the muscle node, the different muscle nodes all have these viewport states that will automatically set up the viewport, this group selector to use the muscle ID. But when you're not in that, what you can do is when you click your uh, cursor button to select, you can click on this gear. And if you scroll down and choose muscle ID, it will bring it into the muscle ID selection mode. So, and uh, you can select the type to primitives in case that for whatever reason is trying to do points instead. So I'm going to say rectus abdominis and let me, 
I oh, sorry, I forgot the Jules one. No, not that one. This one. Yes, I don't know why it's the same icon. Um, yes, select groups or connected geometry. So I'm going to do this, um, this, and that. Hit enter, and I actually want to say delete none selected. Those are the three I want to keep. Okay. So now I did not mean to do that. If we look at our muscle to muscle, um, we see these green lines, and they're actually so. The reason I've gone into wireframe mode, if I go back to smooth wire shaded, it looks as if these constraints are only between the surfaces, right? But actually, what's happening is that it's starting inside the muscle. So inside, it's starting at, they start at the points of the tetrahedra inside the muscle. So not actually at any of the surface points, but exclusively in the internal points. And then those points will look for other muscles with a different muscle ID within this di distance threshold that is specified of that point. Um, and it will look for the surface of the nearby muscles and connect to the closest surface on that nearby muscle. So it's going to connect the interior points of your, let's say your source muscle, it will connect the interior points of the source muscle to the closest within the distance threshold points of the surface of the target attachment muscle. That's important to keep in mind when you set your distance threshold. You don't want to reduce it so much that it's not actually um, giving the interior points enough leeway to find the nearest surfaces. Because even though the surface between the two muscles might be very small, you want it to have a greater distance threshold than that so that it can connect to the interior muscles. And the reason for that is if it's only the surfaces of the muscles that are connected, then the constraints are going to tend to pull the muscles into unwanted shapes. It might cause spikiness, basically. Whereas when it's the internal points of the muscle, it allows the entire volume of the muscle to be pulled along and for it to keep its shape better. And then the reason it's a the target is on a surface is because then it's allowed to slide. So it's actually a stitch constraint that is stitching the internal points to the surfaces of the target points or the target uh, geometries. And that's the slide rate parameter over here. If you set it to one, it's going to be allowed to freely slide across the surface. If it's set to zero, it's not allowed to slide at all. And in between, we'll give it um, some sliding, but with a reduced rate. Okay, so now let's look at the attachment candidate uh, parameter. So as I mentioned, you don't want this distance threshold to be too small because you need to give it enough um, enough leeway to connect to as many of the interior points as possible. But sometimes you might find, so now I'll just bypass that blast for a minute, Um, a typical problem area is something like, and with my current settings, I'm not getting it, but yes, something like this, where you have muscles that are within that radius of the distance threshold that you want for some of the other settings, but you don't really want these two muscles that are on separate that are actually they need to be able to move independently right they happen to be quite close together in the rest position but they need to have that we don't want to constrain them together so this is where we can keep a bigger distance threshold but then specify specific attachment candidates for um, what we want the muscles to connect to okay so this is the general settings tab it's with the group blank so it's for all the muscles but now the attachment candidates only really make sense for if you're working with single muscles or subsets of muscles. It doesn't really make sense to specify attachment candidates for all of your muscles. So uh, I'll go back to 
just the three I had before. And I'm going to create, I'll create a new property tab. Press A for the abdominis. And I'll go to the muscle to muscle tab or sub tab. And I will set the attachment candidate in this case for demonstration purposes to be the belly cavity. Okay. But now I'm going to say, I'm going to create another one, another property for the belly cavity where I want the attachment candidate to be this uh, oblique muscle. Okay. So now the abdominis only attaches to the belly and the belly only attaches to the, um, the, uh, this oblique muscle and the oblique muscle, I haven't specified anything. So the oblique muscle can attach to anything. So this is going to illustrate an important thing to be aware of. And that is that the attachment candidates are one directional. So if I say that I want my belly cavity to only attach to the oblique, that doesn't mean that only the oblique can attach to the belly cavity. Because as you see, the rectus abdominis can attach to the belly cavity. The way to, to help understand this better is if we remember that the source muscles have the constraints starting inside the tets, inside the volume of the muscle on the internal tet points, and the target or attachment candidates get attached on their surfaces. So here we can see this rectus abdominis is attaching to the belly cavity. So that is set by this tab here. The rectus abdominis is allowed to attach to the belly cavity. And here we say the belly cavity is allowed to attach to the oblique. So it's saying the belly cavity cannot attach to the abdominis, which is why you're not seeing any of these um, constraints coming from the belly cavity, the, in the inside of the belly cavity to the surface of this rectus abdominis, but only the ones from inside the rectus abdominis to the surface of the belly, belly cavity. And if we look at the this oblique, we see that there are constraints from inside the volume of the oblique going to both the belly cavity and the rectus abdominis because we didn't specify any attachment candidates for it, which means all muscles are attachment candidates. But because the belly cavity has only the oblique as a ta an attachment candidate, whoops, um, the the internal constraints from the belly cavity can attach to the surface of the oblique. It's a bit hard to see here because they are the bidirectional ones. So the, this one here, for instance, is from the belly cavity to the oblique, and this one is from the oblique to the belly cavity. So this is very hard to see when you're not in wireframe mode, right? They look the same. And the only way you can get some idea is to for instance, well, this is maybe not the right one, but if we look between these two, if I toggle this off, you will see that more constraints are appearing. And that means that's because I'm toggling off this thing that's saying the belly cavity can only attach to the oblique, which means it can attach to all muscles, including this rectus abdominis. So with it off, you get these um, constraints forming from inside the belly cavity they'll go to the surface of the rectus abdominis. And then when I turn this on and enforce this attachment candidate, those other constraints go away. So that explains why you might set up an attachment candidate and you'll still keep seeing these green lines and you might not know why. And um, that is basically why. Um, another thing to bear in mind is sometimes you, if you have layers of muscles, it could look, you could have um, something like this, and it looks like an, it's an attachment between these two muscles. But if you look in wireframe, you'll see that perhaps there's actually another muscle behind here. 
that is connecting to this one and it's this constraint is actually going all the way through the in the muscle in between them and attaching to the one behind it in this case it's not happening because this is a very thick muscle but it could be the case in other situations okay let's look at a few more tips for these uh, attachment candidates so right now we've done it um, to set a, an explicit muscle to attach to what you can also do instead is instead of saying muscle id is equal to this l oblique three you can put in an exclamation mark before the equal sign which will say not equal to oblique three so now you will see those connections the constraints between the belly cavity and the rectus abdominis reappeared but now the ones let's just start uh, toggle this off so you can see okay there they are so you see that one disappears when i turn this on so that's saying that's not allowing it to connect to the bleak three so this might be more useful in a situation where there's just one muscle that you really don't want it to connect to so instead of specifying all the muscles you wanted to connect to you can just specify the one that you don't want it to connect to okay and now i'm just going to um, talk a little bit about how this information is stored and passed along because like i said earlier in the video these constraints aren't actually created yet in this note They're, it's just a preview so if you look at the geometry spreadsheet we go to this last option here the detail attributes which is just these are overall attributes that's stored on the entire geometry you see there are these two attributes created muscle to bone dict and muscle to muscle dict dict standing for dictionary which is a type of way of storing data it works very similar for muscle to bone and muscle to muscle but for in the case of the muscle to muscle you'll see here that we have for the rectus abdominis it says that the attachment candidates are belly cavity and for belly cavity it says the attachment candidate is not oblique three right which is exactly basically what we have here now i mentioned in an earlier video that you need to use your muscle ids for your groups here because using the other groups you know groups created with the group node break for these and that's basically because it's these it breaks these dictionaries the muscle solver vellum node doesn't know how to resolve it um so some groups might work in this field but not all so just beware wary of that um also this is why i'm saying i say for the general settings don't turn this on because let me just temporarily bypass these and bring all the muscles back um if i turn this on this muscle to muscle dict is now going to create an entry for every single muscle and it's not actually going to change the behavior at all it will still allow it to attach to all muscles but it makes it um it just adds unnecessary data basically that houdini has to process yes it's better not to turn it on here and only turn it on as needed for specific muscles or specific groups of muscles um finally we have glue candidates and this is actually a slightly different muscle to muscle constraint uh, that's not controlled by the other settings and i think it's better to leave that for a separate video so as not to confuse it, you but it has the same logic as the attachment candidates in terms of how it works and how you specify it and the bidirectionality it just forms a slightly different type of constraint right in the next video we will look at muscle to bone constraints